Hello, welcome to Ki'i Nero Diaries. It's the 28th of November and this is the first day that France has come out of the lockdown. We've been in lockdown for the last four weeks. Uh, we're still kind of in lockdown in that there's no restaurants or bars open. Uh, there's still a curfew at night, not that we'd notice because, well, we live in the country. We don't really go out at night because there's nothing to see. Um, we have been restricted officially to going just shopping and stuff and going within a few kilometres of where we live. Uh, but we broke that rule a couple of times and uh, here's why. So we're on a on way to Neil, uh, which is a regular trip we make and uh, it's a trip I've made three times in the last uh, month. And, uh, you know, we don't have a commute. We're lucky enough not to be having to go into an office, working and stuff like that. Uh, but the purpose of this is just to see how much battery percentage we use um, for what is a 119 kilometer round trip, which is probably a bit of a big commute. So we're talking about um, uh, 65, 70 miles, 35 miles each way. Which is more than most people do. So how, how many times could you do that on, on one chart? So that's what I'm going to try to determine. Um, and uh, all, the, all the numbers will be at the end. Uh, so we are, here we are in Neil. Um, just going to the car park. It's uh, 55, 56 kilometer to get from home to here. Um, and it's a mixture of little country road driving and sort of um, faster roads, but really you're not getting much above 90 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, so at 50 to 60 miles an hour. Um, and a bit of town driving. So, despite having the heater on, because it's chilly today, it's 11 degrees and 13.9 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers showing on the on the guesstimate on the dashboard there. So I worked that out in um, in uh, miles per kilowatt hour, but it's pretty good um, considering it's I've had the heater on. Um, and uh, say so this is a, I guess, what some people would do, maybe not quite this distance, but for their commute, a mixture of stop and start and a bit of fast, a bit of medium speed. Um, so I, I'm wondering if, you know, if I was still working and I had to go into the office every day, as I used to. Uh, how often would I need to plug in? Um, I need to get a look at that, all that crap coming out the back of that diesel van. Ugh. Horrible. Ah, so this is Neil. There's a car park here, and I think traffic does stop. It yeah. does. It does. It does. Baby. Lady with a baby. And in this car park, which is so clean, so, so clean, um, there's a place to plug in. But it's just down on the lower levels. Uh, yes. Libra. Libra. We were here on Monday. Yeah, we were here on Monday. What we're doing, this. Okay, so this is this is such a clean car park. It's like a fairy grotto. It's like a fairy grotto, and there's little red and green lights above the parking spaces to tell you. 
Um, if the space is full or empty, now we're going to go down a level because we can plug in and get some. It's only a granite cable, but we can get some free power. Um, but it's a bit of a. Uh, Got to go down another level to get it. Look at this. So Nior is a town of about 80, 90,000 people. It's the sort of county town, I suppose you would say in England. Uh, it's got the prefecture in it. So it's all the, all the officialdom, all the bureaucracy is in there. French don't have a word for that, you know. Yeah, the French don't have a word for bureaucracy. Like, they don't have a word for entrepreneur either. Um, if you remember George W. Bush telling the world that uh, when the French decided not to join in with the invasion of Iraq. There you go. Um, the reason we're here today and the reason we were here on Monday is because... Some people in the UK decided they didn't want to be in the EU anymore. And so, we can't just live here, carry on living here, without a thing called a cut de séjour. Um, and we have a cut de séjour. It's called a cut de séjour European. But of course, UK, as of the end of next month, will no longer... Well, in fact, earlier this year, we stopped being members of the EU. Um, so the French have very kindly said, you don't have to worry about bringing all your paperwork, which we had to do three years ago when we first got the carte de séjour, where you have to provide everything, you know, when your mum was born, who her mum was, and all that stuff. Um, it's there. No, it's here. It's this one. It's this one. It's this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and nobody is using any of the electric plugs. How is that then? So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five or six spaces. I'll go here. Reserved for vehicles electric. How's that? So yeah, we we're just going to swap. We're just we're just going to swap our. Carte de Azure European for a Carte de Azure French one. And so, bugger off UK. Thank you, France. Thank you, France, yes. So, in the 11th century, I think it was, uh, Henry II of England married Hel Ellen of Aquitaine, and they did a kind of deal, and this became part of the Kingdom of England. Um, and they built this dungeon. Um, it's called the dungeon now. It was obviously a castle uh, at one time. And from the 18th century, they used to throw English people in here. Thankfully, they're not going to throw us in. They're going to let us stay, despite the fact that British people voted to leave the EU. And uh, we've just done all the paperwork for our new cart to Sejour. Uh, Mrs. E. Nero and I will be getting them in the post over the next few weeks. So we'll be legally allowed to stay in France, which is nice. Thank you very much, France. And uh, no thanks to you Brits who voted to leave. I'm sure there's none watching this little channel who voted to leave. But anyway, uh, back to the car now. See how many percent we've put on while we've been walking. Well, it seems, it seems French bureaucracy was extremely quick. Uh, we were so quick, we didn't even get charged for the parking. It's normally 90 euro cents if you spend an, uh, just over an hour. Um, but... Uh, Here's the one, two, three, four, five spaces where you can plug your electric car in here. Uh, we've added 2% while we've walked into town and back. Um, and now Mrs. E. Nero can't actually <laughs> unplug it because I need to lock it and unlock it again. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, good.
So, uh, apart from uh, having a bit of a moan about Brexit, uh, what did uh, we learn from um, from those three trips to uh, Neil? Well, I'll just uh, go through that quite quickly. The first trip was made towards the end of October when we were just into the lockdown, uh, but I needed to go there. And uh, uh, it was 17 degrees, and I just charged the car up to 100% the night before. I actually left home with it at 97%. Uh, got back at 70, uh, with it at 77 percent so use 20 percent um, of rain, of the battery uh, for a 119 kilometer drive which implies a range of 595 kilometers now I've never seen that on the gasometer even in the middle of summer so I don't suppose that's very realistic but there we go that's what it was uh, 369 miles is the implied range of the car with a temperature at 17 degrees and just a normal trip i wasn't trying to go slow i wasn't hyper miling you know there's a few miles to get onto the main roads where we go on country back roads then it's kind of i guess in the uk you call them a roads but they're much emptier than than they are in the uk those kind of roads really no traffic and then the last sort of three or four miles uh, running into the centre of uh, Neil, uh, as you saw on the video. So the second time we did it, the temperature was 14 degrees, according to the car, and uh, allowing for the 2% I added uh, in the car park um, while we were walking into town and back. Um, so I took that off. We used 22% of the battery capacity on that trip for the same journey distance, which implies uh, a range of 541 kilometers or 335 miles is still really, really good, probably more realistic. I have seen in the summer uh, when I charge to 100%, um, 550 uh, kilometer uh, as, as, an, as an estimated range. Um, and then the last trip we did, it was 11 degrees. Uh, we did use the heater for some of the trip, as you saw on the video. Um, and we used 24% of the battery capacity, again, allowing for the 2% that we picked up in the car park. So, you know, I deducted that. Um, now, that implies a range of 496 uh, kilometres or 307 miles, which is probably more realistic. So if, if, if you had to do a commute like that, um, which I don't think many people do, I think the average commute uh, in Europe is probably about, 30 35 kilometers a day but if you had to do 119 kilometers and you charged up to 100 percent in the e-nero on a sunday night you'd be able to do monday tuesday wednesday thursday you'd be able to do it but you'd return home with 20 kilometers of range left so you probably wouldn't want to do that i hope everyone is uh, keeping well uh, with the covid and not going completely crazy with it um as I said, we've just uh, we just ended the lockdown today. Still, you know, quite restricted here. Um, and yeah, if you have been watching, thank you very much. And please do tick a like if you liked it. And better still, subscribe. Thanks now. Bye.